Hey, it's Fred from the Laptop Barn here. Today we're going to show you how to change the keyboard on a Dell Latitude 5500 series laptop. Hang on here, this was not Dell's finest hour in mechanical design. A lot of keyboards you can change in about 15 minutes. This one's more like 45 minutes. This is what we're going to replace. That's a keyboard. It's a fairly common problem to drop a drink on those or bang a key too hard. And uh, that can cause a problem. So we're going to show you how to change that. You need a screwdriver and a, a Phillips screwdriver and a pry tool. It's about the only tools you're going to need. We're going to turn it upside down and take off the bottom. Take off the bottom plate. There are screws around the perimeter we're gonna remove them and safely store them because you're gonna have a lot of screws on this disassembly the pry tool you can get underneath the plastics are is now uh, now that you've got the fasteners undone there are some plastic tabs that are holding it in and you got to pry it up and just be careful not to force it too hard we uh, you can use a flat bladed screwdriver we got this little pry tool we use again it's don't force it too hard kind of work your way there we go you see it starting to release as we work our way around there you go and it pops right off that's the bottom plastic piece so now in order to get to the keyboard we got to come through the base and take everything out of this design Holy mother, who designed this thing? Take everything from the bottom to get to the keyboard. Most good designs, you get the keyboard from the top. All right, we just took out the battery, a couple of screws, and that popped right out. Now we're taking out the hard drive, a couple of screws, and that popped right out. Now we're going to go, and uh, there's a um, bunch of other screws that hold a plastic retaining plate in. You can see we're going around uh, catching all those screws to get this plate off. Again, be careful with these screws. They're, they don't use the same size screws. It was way too many. Horrible design, but that's just an editorial from a 30-year engineer. Okay. And um, now once you've got all the screws off, that retaining plastic plate... Um, you have to unclip the speaker there. It's in the way. And I guess, oh yeah, we got to untake the Wi-Fi cable out of the way too before we can pull this retainer up. Get the cable right out of the way of the uh, Wi-Fi. All right, now, um, whoops, I missed a screw. There's one. So many screws, hard to get them all the first crack. Now, that plastic piece is up. That needed to be removed. Set it aside. Okay, now we'll continue. Got a couple of screws right down in that area that uh, you're going to need to take off to get that little plastic tab off there. And a couple more there on the bottom to get that plastic piece up and off. I just pull it back out of the way. Okay, now you got the connectors from the keyboard. You see them right there. There's three connectors. And just they slide out of the motherboard. We're going to physically take this motherboard right out. You believe that? You got to take the motherboard out to get it to keyboard. Horrible design. Okay. And of course, we got to take a couple of screws out over by the fan. And the other motherboard screws are along the base. Now we got a whole handful of motherboard screws. Not only a lot of connectors, but they're all different. Obviously designed by a rookie. Okay. Now, once you get them all out, you can pull that motherboard out. There's a little tab you got to be careful of. Right there. Make sure you get that thing out of the way. It's, the, uh, it's in the smart card uh, drive. It's a blank that's just in there to... Keep it from getting dusty. But you got to get that out of the way before you can pull this motherboard out. There you go. We pulled the motherboard right out. All this to get it to keyboard. Unbelievable. Okay. A lot of screws. 
somebody that worked at Dell that designed this, his uncle owned a screw manufacturing company. Totally over-engineered. Thousands of screws. Don't drop any of them. You're going to need them all. You'll notice we're, gonna, we're accumulating a handful. This is a plate that the keyboard is mounted to. So it wasn't enough to have a keyboard. You also have a plate to mount it to. No other design does that. Horrible design. Okay. The um, Get all the screws out here. All the way around the perimeter of the design. Get a get a pick, kind of get all these connectors back out of the way so you can pull this plate out. And there's a hidden screw right there. Gotta make sure you don't miss that one. Keep on around. Keep on going. You're not out of screws yet. A whole handful, I'm telling you. Okay, now we want to be able to get this plate up, which has the old keyboard on the other side of it. So there's what you're after. Keyboard, and it's mounted on a plate. So that's the end point of what you were looking for. Now you got to take this keyboard is the bad keyboard, so you got to take this one off the plate so you can assemble the new keyboard on the plate. Again, a whole commodity of screws holding this thing on there. I mean enough screws to keep some screw manufacturer in business for a long time. And Again, a, a totally unique screw, so keep them in your hand. Put them in a nice convenient spot. Okay, now you've taken the keyboard off from the plate. Okay, so now you take that same plate, and the idea is to assemble the new keyboard which you just purchased and assemble it onto that plate. You can reuse the plate. Okay, so reverse the process. Put this keyboard down and now take this whole handful of six zillion screws and um, reassemble the, um, the keyboard. all around the perimeter and a few in the center. Hopefully you've well secured those when you took them out because these are a unique screw that aren't easy to replace. Not available at the hardware store. Got to go to the Dell Engineer's uncle's warehouse. And we continue that process. Um, again, the... Uh, issue here is to mount that keyboard onto that plate. Now once you've got all the screws in and you're ready uh, to put it back inside the case, if you start it on the bottom like we're doing there in the picture and then then let it flop down. You gotta be careful of all these connectors so it's not got you don't have a connector trapped under it. Okay so once it's in place grab that big handful of screws you got and we're going to walk around the perimeter of this assembly and put those screws into the keyboard and plate assembly, which will adhere it to the um, case. This process took about seven minutes to disassemble, and it's a couple of extra minutes. It always takes a little longer to put it back together than it does to take it apart. All things considered, as long as you know what you're doing, it's not too much time. The, the, the risk on this, with so many things you're taking apart, 
is uh, you got to be careful and make sure you get everything put every all the connectors connected back up because you really can't test this keyboard until you're all done and got it plugged in and the motherboard's back in so if you have a problem um, it can be a little difficult to troubleshoot without taking it all apart and starting all over again so just be careful especially on these connectors make sure they're in there good okay so we've got that uh, keyboard and plate assembly on there now we're going to put the motherboard back in I'm going to line that uh, port up with the hole and should just slip right in there I'll make sure the connectors aren't trapped there you go and uh, it sits right down in there now we get that screw out and screw the motherboard back down to the frame you'll note where we're putting these screws in at helps if you have a little we have a little magnetic board you can see off in the distance there that not only keeps the screws uh, attached to something so that you don't accidentally drop them on the floor but it also since it's uh, magnetized it keeps them separate because you have a lot of different types of screws okay now you're gonna rehook in the uh, little speaker connector there it's a tricky little thing to line up Need very delicate fingers and it just snaps right into the connector the um, Again, the, one of the important things here is to make sure you got everything connected to so it to take this thing all apart again. Okay, there's a couple of screws that hold that on. And I'm making sure that it's connected. Oops, I had to pull it off again. It's a tricky little guy. Slide It just slides right in once you get it in the right position. All right, let's try this again. Third time's a charm. Again, a terrible design making that so hard to get at. I know what a car mechanic feels like now. Okay, get her lined up and there it goes. We got it. Okay, now we uh, hook up that bracket on the side with its screws and then we get these connectors that connect the motherboard or the keyboard the keyboard has uh, three separate ZIF connectors why in the hell they had to have three zip connectors I have no idea again terrible design but there's three of them you got to get them all hooked up need some keys I think one of them's the backlight and the others, they've just put the keys into two separate connectors. Okay, now that uh, plastic retaining pl uh, piece, that uh, has got to go in there. And you fish the speaker wire. There's a little channel there that you kind of push it in and then snap it into place. All right, now you got to fasten down that plastic piece. It's kind of a holding piece that holds everything together again a lot of parts in this assembly way more parts than previous designs okay so we get to uh, get all these put down you can see where we're going there when you're all done, hopefully you've, um, you would um, not have any screws left over. Okay, now you fish that wire. This is the wire for the Wi-Fi. These are always a pain in the neck, but you got to route them in a little channel around the Wi-Fi area there. And they will plug onto the card. We use a little tool just to push them down. It's a snap fit. 
it'll be real obvious once you're doing it. There's a couple of lines that go to the antenna, and the other two are for a cell card. This one doesn't have, so those other two leads just led to nowhere. Um, and then there's a screw that holds it down. Okay, now there's a connector right there that needs to be reseated. And a connector right there that needs to be reseated. See how we do these. There's a little, they're little flip over connectors. Uh, another one right there. They slides in zero force. And a screw there. And now we got to put the hard drive back in. Got the hard drive and its protective cover. There's a screw that holds that. And then the battery. Slide the battery in. Battery cable snaps into the motherboard. A couple of quick screws hold the battery in. And then there's that little plastic piece that fills the memory card bay. Snap that in. And then the back cover goes on. Um, and we go around and button up all the screws. Again, uh, you really can't test this until you're done. You could have not put this bottom cover on um, and tested it and saved having to take all those screws out. But you're pretty much at the mercy of doing it right the first time. So just take your time. There's nothing in, nothing too difficult. Follow our procedure there. And you'll be okay. Okay. Now, one last thing you'll notice. Um, we'll push down on the keyboard like that. There's so many things that have went to that assembly. Right along the front there, that piece usually needs a little assistance to seat. Now you can see it's seated down. And there you go. Fred from the Laptop Barn. Over and out. Good luck with this one.